Hello, so in the next series of videos, we're gonna be using LaTeX to draw some professional looking images um, and sort of looking at how we can actually make some plots within LaTeX and then export those as well. So as always, I'm gonna use my Overleaf as my LaTeX compiler. I'm just gonna quickly log in with Google there and I'm gonna start a new project and I'm gonna to come to blank project here. I'm just gonna call these example plots and then we're ready to go. Okay, fine. So first of all, I'm gonna get rid of all of this source code here. Um, and I'm just going to start off by creating a document class called standalone. OK, now, um, if you're familiar with LaTeX, there are lots of different document classes that we can use. OK, um, the most common one is article. Uh, if you've watched my other series of videos on exams, then there is an exam document class which we have used before. Standalone is useful if you just want to create a section of perhaps a maths formula or uh, a text which is compiled in LaTeX. Or in the case of today's video, we are going to be creating images. So we just want to create images. We don't want necessarily the full document being compiled. Now, as always, I'm going to use some packages. I'm not actually going to go through these packages in detail. I'm just going to literally copy and paste them in and then you can uh, copy and paste those into your document as required. And then when you're ready, I'm just going to put begin and end my document as such. So I'm going to put a few lines in the middle and that is where I'm actually going to compile my images. Now, LaTeX basically has a package called Tix, um, which you can see here, which is what we're going to be using for all our drawing commands today. Um, Tix is very, very user friendly. It's built um, with users in mind. And I'm going to show you a few instances of how we can use that. So let's first of all start our Tix picture. So we're going to go begin Tix picture. And obviously I'm going to have to end that as well. Uh, fortunately, Overleaf does that automatically. And this is where I'm going to put my images in here. OK, so let me try and illustrate the way which Tix works. There's different ways that you can go about doing things. But the way that I find the easiest is to actually think about Tix as almost like a grid. In fact, let me draw a grid to try and illustrate this. So I'm first of all going to ask Tix to draw something. So I'm going to go uh, backslash and then type the word draw. So I'm going to tell it to draw something. I'm going to get it to draw a grid. And the grid is going to start from the point zero zero. I'm then going to type grid in the middle and the final point, which is going to be the top right hand corner, is just going to be the point five five. OK, so literally what this is going to do is draw a grid from the uh, point zero zero up to five five. So if I comply all that, let's see what we get. OK, great. So you can see here that I've got a grid over here on the right hand side. The lowest point is the point zero zero. The up point is five five. And you can see that basically each grid is worth one unit. If I want to change any parameters, what I can do is come here next to draw, put my square brackets in much like the same as we would use in ordinary LaTeX. And I could change the color, for example. So if I just type the color light gray, you can see that that grid changes from black, which is the default, to a light gray. If I want to change the step, so instead of it being a step of one unit, what I can just type is step equals perhaps half a unit, so 0.5. And you can see that I get more grid over here on the right hand side. OK, great. So let me actually take this back to a step of one unit. So I'm just going to get rid of the step and then it'll by default come back as one unit. And let's first of all start just by plotting some lines. OK, so again, I'm going to use my draw command. And I'm going to draw a line which starts from the point 1, 1. So looking at my cursor on the right hand side here, 1, 1 is going to be here. And I'm going to go to the point 3, 3. OK, so 1, 1 and then 3, 3 is going to be the point here. So again, I'm just going to give the coordinates. The start coordinate of my line is 1, 1. I'm then going to tell LaTeX to draw a line between my points. I'm just going to put two hyphens as such. And I'm going to go to the point 3, 3 like this. Now you notice that whenever I want to draw something in LaTeX, and I should have pointed this out when we did the draw command before, ordinary LaTeX you don't need to do this, but in ticks you need to put a semicolon at the end, which means execute that command. If you don't do that, it's going to return an error. So basically once I've finished typing my command, I'm going to execute it with a semicolon. And you should see on the right hand side now a line which starts from the point 1, 1 and goes to the point 3, 3. Clearly, if I want to change this to go to the point, say, 4, 3, I can absolutely change my end coordinate to go to the point 4, 3 instead. So it's nice and intuitive just visualizing this grid. And then I can literally just draw um, between two different points. And obviously, the line in this case are these two hyphens here. 
I can also change various different parameters about this line. So again, if I come next to the draw command, put my square brackets in, I can, for example, make this a thick line. So if I just type the, the word thick, you can see that this line over here on the right hand side becomes thick. You can even go ultra thick if you want to. Um, to, or you can actually specify the width. So you can go line width equals and then actually specify the width there. Okay, what else can you do? Well, let's suppose that I actually want to put some arrows on this line. So, um, in fact, let me get rid of that ultra thick there just to make it a little bit clearer. If I come into my square brackets again, and if I want to draw an arrow on the right hand side of the, the line, in other words, on the end of that line, I can literally just tell ticks I want an arrow. So I'm going to go hyphen and then I'm going to go the greater than symbol. So you see this symbol here, it kind of looks like a right facing arrow. If I recompile this, you should be able to basically see the arrow comes up here on the right hand side. If I want it to be on the left hand side, well, I'll just go less than on the left, then the hyphen. So you can see it's a left facing arrow. If I recompile it, the arrowhead comes down to the left hand side. If I want it both sides, again, I can just put the arrowhead at both end of the line in the parameter. And again, you can see that this line now has two, an arrow where the arrowheads are facing both ways. I also have a few different options, however, um, if I don't like the shape of that arrowhead. So if you don't like the shape of the arrowhead as it comes in, it's fairly curly. You can absolutely change this by using um, different commands. So for example, if I want a stealth arrow, which goes on the right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my line first and then I'm going to write the word stealth. OK, so it's a particular type of arrowhead. Stealth is a type of arrowhead. There are different types. But if I now recompile this, on the right hand side of my line, I get a different arrowhead. Again, if I want it on the left, all I'm going to have to do is move that line, that hyphen, to be on the right. So that the arrowhead is on the left, the line is on the right, so it should be a left facing arrow like such. If I want the arrowhead both ways, again, just like before, I can put stealth at each end of the line and then I'll get an arrowhead at both ends as such. OK. Now, I do also have some parameters if I want to do this way. So, for example, if I want to change the right arrowhead, I'm just going to put curly brackets around my stealth um, arrowhead. And I'm actually then going to put another set of uh, square brackets at the end of the stealth arrowhead. So then I can change a few parameters. For example, I might want to make it bigger. So I might want to scale it to be twice as big. OK, then you can basically see when I recompile it, the right arrowhead is twice as big as the left arrowhead. I could also use different arrowheads on the left hand side. So for example, this arrowhead, which is currently uh, stealth on the left hand side, I could change it to be a circle. So if I just change stealth to be circle, again, you can see that that arrowhead now becomes a circle. Again, I can also change a few parameters here. So I might want to, uh, let me put my curly brackets around my arrowhead like such. And then if I put my square brackets next to my arrowhead, again, I can change my scale. So I might want the scale to be two. I can also put more parameters in by separating it with a, co with a comma. So for example, I might want it to be an open circle. In other words, it's not going to be filled. So if I recompile that, again, you can see on the left hand side, this is now an open circle, which has not been filled and on the right hand side. I've got my stealth. So there's lots of different options for drawing lines. Now, the last thing that I'm going to show you in this video is how to add um, some text along this arrow. Perhaps this might be a vector or perhaps this might be a line that you want to draw with a particular label on it. Well, what I can do is come to the end of my drawing command just before the semicolon, and then I'm going to put a node in. Now, in general, a node is just a point where you can attach text or a label or a point to. So I'm just going to type the word node. Then what I'm going to do is just simply type what I want my node to be. So in this case, I'm actually going to put um, it in bold faced math font. So I'm going to use my uh, dollar symbol to tell it I want to go into uh, math mode. I'm going to go math BF and I'm just going to use the letter A. OK, so now if I recompile this, what you should be able to see is that this arrow head at the top has now got a letter uh, attached to it. Clearly, this doesn't look very good. So what I can do is come next to the node command and again, put a square brackets and I can change various different parameters. For example, I might want to put the node midway through that line. So if I now recompile it just by typing the word midway, you can see that that node now becomes in the midway. Clearly, I don't necessarily want it on the line. It's not very clear to see. So what I'm just going to do is put a comma next to where I've got midway and I might want to go above and maybe to the left. OK, so if I just go above and left, you can see that this node on the right hand side basically comes up above and left. If I actually want to make it closer 
um, uh, or further away from the line, what I can do is where I put above left, I can go equals and then I can actually put some spacing in here. For example, if I go above left and then two pints, if I recompile that, this node now will go further away from the line. Okay, and actually if I just exaggerate that just by putting 10 points, perhaps you'll be able to see a little bit more. And again, you can see that's even further from the line. If I want to move it closer, obviously I'd use a negative distance. Okay. Last thing that I'm going to show you then with this node, what I can do is I might want to rotate it. Okay, so if I want to rotate it, I'll just type the word rotate equals, and then I'll give my degrees that I want to rotate it by. So let's say 180 degrees, maybe, uh, maybe make that 15 pi, so it's a little bit further away. And now you can see that if I recompile it, this node will basically be rotated 180 degrees. And you can see here that it is upside down, but it's still above and left. Okay, so that's how we're going to draw lines in Tick's picture.